Alchemist since it's been released and um, having a bit of fun with it. And um, watching a couple of streams as well. And I actually found out a few new things that I didn't know before. So I wanted to, to share that and I'm messing around a little bit because yeah, I'm just enjoying it. So if you want to watch it, by all means do. If you've got any questions as ever, put them in the chat. So what I've done here is I've just basically messed about a bit, um, creating a sort of alchemist's little house. You can see we don't have roof levels yet. We don't have multi-levels um, yet, but this took about 20 minutes maximum to put together. So I've got a nice library, as you can see. Um, lots and lots of books, far too many books. We've got a little bit of a, an artwork here on the side, and that's going to be one of the first um, jobs to show you. Um, this Chandelab candelabra is not in the right place, I think. So as ever, you can just move stuff about. You can um, arrange it as you like it. So tricks. So I wanted to show you a few things. So one of the things I couldn't work out last time is how to resize stuff. It's actually really easy. So for example, I've got a little picture here. I want to resize that. Oh, I can't do that one. Okay. Let's go for the lion. I want a really big lion. You grab the, the bars here on the side and that's what you have to do. I hadn't clocked that at all. Oh, let's make it a little kitty cat. There we go. So that's an easy way. Another thing I didn't quite know beforehand was um, doors. Yeah, you can't just have them like this. You can, of course, you can turn them around. Yeah, they're not necessarily always the same on both sides. So that's very easy. But you can also make sure that they are open on the map. Um, again, perfectly obvious, but I hadn't quite noticed that. Um, little bug, maybe. Not quite sure why, but we've got some grass coming from the garden through the wall. Um, not a huge deal. Another thing um, that I found really cool, yes, uh, you've got the mirror here and you can see I can rotate it. As, as I rotate it, you can see that it's actually picking up the reflection from around the room. I mean, how cool is that? You're never going to see that on a map unless you take this sort of screenshot, but I think it's really cool. Um, yeah. Lights. The next thing that I found out, which is really cool, I had no idea you could do this. I watched a YouTube uh, video from somebody else who, who did this. You see these paintings here that you can get in the assets. So if you go to the assets in here, uh, the second one from the top in decorations, objects, decorations, you've got lots of statues, etc. You've got rugs, you've got hangings, wall hangings, etc. But here, these paintings, yeah, some of them are quite neat. Let me put one on here for you. Um, what shall we go for? Yeah, okay, let's go for this one. So a nice big landscape. Right, if you want something that is specific to your adventure, you want a map on the wall, or you want a landscape that people will recognize, or an Easter egg of some sort, what I didn't know is you can actually go in here and you can replace the picture. How cool is that? Yeah? You can then, of course, also, if they, they're in a room and foundry or whatever, and you've got this as a map, and you can say, okay, what does the room look like? You can actually do a screenshot of this and share it with them. So it looks not just like a picture, but it looks like a framed picture in the location that they're currently in. And I think that's really cool. Um, right, what else was there? Let me try and zoom out a bit. As I've done, as I've done before, you know, the different map views. So the flat one, raised walls, and the sort of landscape. In one of the other videos I've done, um, I talk about how I would actually, for landscape maps, often use this sort of perspective. Yeah, this sort of, yeah, about there. Because for landscapes, it's really cool. For rooms, it doesn't work as well, especially not if you want to use them as battle maps. So for that, you probably will want something like this here. And again, one of the other videos I recently did, um, I'll tell you how to import this into Foundry and with lights, without lights, um, with walls, how the walls work. That's pretty cool. So let me just see. I'm going to save this for a moment. Go to Alchemist Lab, something like that. And I need to put this in the right old folder. Dungeon Alchemist. And let's start over with a new map. Yeah, let's have a look at that. 
file new map. 23 and by 20 create grasslands. Yeah, sure. Um, flat, no water, and gonna be in the meadow. So, what should we make? How about a bakery or something? A little village, a couple of houses with a bakery and something else. On. So, let's go to village. Bakery. So the bakery, of course, is not, if I do this, it's not the whole building. Bakers need somewhere to live as well. So this is in the shop. I don't have an oven in here. If you wanted to recreate, and that's another thing I didn't point out, but it's fairly obvious. You can just select the room again and recreate it, and you can select it again and recreate it until you get what you want. Now, there, at least we've got a stove and we've got lots of bread out. Okay, the windows are on the wrong places. That's far too many windows. Let's have another look. Ah, now we have an oven, but we don't have any windows. We've got a bay window. Oh, they are cool. I haven't seen those before. <laughs> the lantern is on the wrong side of the bay window. So let's fix this up. Now, lantern on the outside of the room, please. Um, we have a way in, but that needs to be turned around so that we can bars from the indoors. Uh, this bay window looks odd on the corner. Let's move it across a little bit. So there, same with this one. Um, we probably... Yeah, I don't mind that actually, but I'm going to move that over somewhere. Can I move that into this corner? Ah, the basket is in the way. And again, the basket is in the way. That'll do. We need some stairs upstairs because, as I said, even even bakers need to live somewhere. So stairs up. Um, what sort of stairs? Just gingerbread <laughs> stairs. Why not? Quite cool for bakers. Well, maybe not. Let's go for something normal. Looks a bit grand, doesn't it? Corner stair. Oh, okay. Let's do that. So. Chair or something like that. Or furniture. Bar stool. A stool. Around here somewhere. Behind the counter, might need one of those. And if now you say, for example, this is a nice chair, but it's a bit too big, really. Shrink it! Because we worked out how to do it, didn't we? Um, what else would you need? Door in, put the door out, back door maybe. Right, by the way, if you want to change the, the walls on a place like this, you can go to Wall Tool, Place Walls. You can then go to say, oh, right, I actually want proper stone walls here, because otherwise it's going to be too dangerous here. So let's go for a regular with wood base. Now that's that's odd. The other way around would make more sense. Wood top. Uh, let's go for masonry. Why not? So you can now see that if I hold my mouse on the outside of the room, it will change the outside. If I hold it on the inside, it will do the inside. So let's do the outside. So my outside is now brick built, and the inside is still this sort of wood paneling, which I quite like the look of. So let's leave it like that. So, we will need another building across. Um, what shall we go for? Go for farmstead. Over here. Actually, it's a bit big again. Start like this. And do a couple of rooms next to each other. When did, when did we get one? A year ago, I think. Wow. Got a garden in it. <laughs> That's the wrong gate. So again, we can easily fix this sort of stuff. 
simple door in it. And you can see it sort of works, but it's all a bit cramped, isn't it? So some of these rooms I definitely would want to redo or rearrange a little bit. And maybe across the way we'll have a little smithy. So smithy up the front. Okay, then we need a bedroom or something in the back. Castle bedroom. It's a castle. Might be a bit grand. A mansion. Bedroom servants, that might do. <laughs> okay, bunk beds. Sure, why not? Right. And then let's put some paths down. Now, landscapes, you can't use floor tiles for that. Um, so for landscapes, you really need to, to paint something onto it. And this sort of dirt works quite well for paths. You can adjust the, the brush side here. So, okay, there's a path running through. Um, so it removes a couple of trees in the wrong place. A couple of doors. Yeah, so let's move some stuff. So object tool, you can grab any of the objects. You can also resize it, as I was showing earlier. Works with trees. You can rotate it with the mouse wheel or with the handlebar up there. So this door should really be here, I reckon. So what else can we do? Yeah, as I said, this is all a bit basic at this stage. Smithy. It's got a strange way in. Let's see whether we can find a sign for the smithy. Sign, sign, sign. Where would sign be? I've seen them before. It's not doors. Oh, you can get loose. Very important. Screens. Oh, actually, let's use one of these screens for the bakers. It's a bit odd. There we go. Just to separate the shop. Where was I? Signs. I wanted to have a look at signs. I'm sure I've seen signs. Where did I see signs? Not in the walls. Well, there should be decorations, really, shouldn't there? Hmm. Decorations, right. Carry on. Furniture. No. Lights, no. Nature, no. Storage. Ah, no, that's not signposts. Oh, engineering stuff. Look, you can have a windmill. And levers. Oh, I like levers. Let's have a mysterious lever on the wall in the smithy. You never know what it's going to do. And we can have wells. Um, and one of the things I really would like to be able is to... to Oh, you can. Excellent. You can put these objects straight on there, not just in rooms. Good. Right, where was I? Still looking for my signposts. Graveyard, farming, oh, cart. We need a cart somewhere. Beehives. See, when it says animals, you can have things for animals, but you can't actually have animals. Um, I think that would be a really nice touch as well, to have something with animals. Like have a little dog or something. You can do that in, in Tailspire, which is quite cool. Maybe it's going to come at some point. All the library assets, look at all that stuff. Games. Yeah, you can have dice trays, but can you have a role-playing game? No, I don't see one. Uh, a three-string lute. Interesting. Okay, it's like a balalaika. I'm still looking for my signposts. If you know where they are, let me know. Oh, yeah. I like a loom. But it needs to be smaller. Rip. Signposts. Oh, of course, I can use this one here. 
one is a bakery sign, you know that one. There we go. Blacksmith. Right, let me fix up this room up here. Um, this is supposed to be farmhouse, completely randomly generated, but you can see it is really, really full. Um, it's got random pillars in the middle that I don't really need. It's got these big storage jars. I think this was a bathroom, wasn't it? Let's move those up there. It's got tree coming through the wall. Again, that's something I don't like to see. Um, is that supposed to be butter churn or clothes wash? Tub. Don't want the tub there. I can go over there. We don't need the trapdoor, do we? And if a trapdoor, it would be somewhere in the back. In the corner. I'm going to make it small. Can I make it smaller? No, I can't make these smaller. So one of the things that I find is sometimes it places strange assets and repeats some of the assets a bit too much. Um, of course, if you depends on how sensitive to these things you are or your players are. But for example, if you want this sort of big barrel, how do they get it in there? It's bigger than the doors. So let's make it a bit smaller. But that, of course, varies very much by the players. So I don't need another trap door and another tub. And let's clear this out. What we don't have is beds. Um, hmm. Let's make some beds. Furniture. And if you have any questions, by the way, in the chat, then please put them in. Hopefully, I can pick them up. Let me just see whether I can pick them up in here. Pop it in the chat if you want to know something. Beds. We're looking at beds. So that's going to be furniture. And bathtubs. Oh, okay. I'm going to look for them. Bed. Some simple beds. By the window, it's too drafty. No. A wagon wheel. Let's put the wagon wheel on the outside of the wall. Uh, maybe bunk bed for the kids. Okay, now if the window is on the way, I can just move the window. Right, a couple of trunks. Chests for things to store, or maybe a wardrobe. You can see lots of assets on here. I'm quite pleased with those assets, but they all have very much the same sort of look. Storage cabinet. Oh, that's nice and small. That can go to the bottom of the bed. Um, closet. That's huge. Very rustic. Now that window doesn't work anymore. Okay. We need something for the corner. What do you think we should have? Some sort of pedestal with a house god on it. Not with treasure. So, what shall we put on it? Mm, little demon statue? Nah, Lady of Darkness. Of course, oh, she has a, her own pedestal. Let's put her in there. But she's too big. Oh, I just knocked her off her pedestal. <laughs> Excellent. If you grab the pedestal and something is on it, everything on it will move. So if we shrink that down a bit, we can even put it on here. So it's not in the way when you're trying to wipe the floor. So, okay, it's a bit high. Shrink the... That's better. Now, I think this is really lovely. Just having fun with it, playing like this. Um, 
but it can be really quick as well to make some pretty decent maps for your, for your scenarios. So, how long did that take? That was about 15 minutes, 10 minutes now. Yeah, that's with me talking, with me playing about. Okay, it's not, not perfect, but I've got something presentable. Yeah, if you want something partially rotated, I think, was it shift? No, control, no, alt. There's a way of doing a sort of half rotation. I've done it earlier. Maybe it doesn't work for all assets. So, we need a picture on the wall, right? So, let's have a look. Um, and this is what I was showing at the beginning of the stream, but I think this is so cool. I want to show that again. Too big, too big, too big. Let's use this one. So if you want a specific picture on the wall, click on the picture. Go to your art folder, wherever you're keeping your art. And then we can have our communist propaganda. No, we'll have a little um, village scene or a nice werewolf on the wall. Let's go for the village scene. So, I'm not sure whether you can see it. Hopefully you can. That is now the picture that I put in the game. For my players to discover. Yeah. Let's put another one. A really big picture somewhere so you can see better what I'm doing. On the outside wall. Go in here, go for the village fair by Bruegel, and we need to rotate the sun a little bit so we can actually see it properly. So we go to the environment setting. We can then adjust the position of the sun, and there we go, now it's nicely lit up. Warm light, purple light, green light, whatever you want to have. Sun. Yeah, isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Make the sun really bright, get bloomy effects out of it. Or make it nighttime. And you've got the presets, of course. All pretty cool. So. And look, I know that this might not be perfect for my for sort of sensible village point of view but if you would just want a little village scene a little village battle or encounter there's absolutely nothing wrong with just using this as it is all right save that boom, 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 maps. An alchemist village all right Maybe do a new one. Do you want me to try anything? Put it in the chat if you like. So maybe go for something in the forest. A bit hilly. Broadleaf. Or the little river somewhere. So as a little... Um, Info for those guys, if you don't know this yet. If you look at the the help, um, basically, it is really simple to use this. There are a couple of things you need to get used to, the like camera controls up here, um, or things like placing objects. Yeah, there's not a lot to read here. It's not hard. Um, object controls. This is probably the one that I didn't quite clock. Yeah, scaling. Uh, I showed you that duplicating. If you have this one asset that was placed randomly by the by the algorithms, you can just then say, okay, I want a few more of these. Works very well for doors. So if you want to have all the same doors somewhere, you can just duplicate them, copy them across. Um, that easy to use this the software. It's a real bargain, I think, as well. So we've got our little forest scene. Yeah, okay. 
too many for me um we've got too many logs just lying about because they look all the same so let's just get rid of a couple maybe move one there get rid of this one um get rid of that one we also have too many trees now it looks great don't get me wrong it looks like a forest doesn't it but if you want to use it as a battle map of some sort you can't see anything. You can't see the wood for the trees. So let's thin it out a little bit. Let's get our chainsaws out. Um, uh, not have too many trees. So as I was showing in the last video I did, um, you can raise these, you can flatten the terrain, you can shape it quite nicely. Um, we can shrink some trees. Actually, that one is a nicer tree. Let's go for this one. A thicket for some robbers to be in. And too many cut trees, as I said. Alright, that looks a bit better now. I can see a path. More tree stumps. Who's been here? Ah, oh, yeah, a little trick as well. If you are wondering, you're not really wanting a building in this, but you want a bigger map, you can always grab a room, even a garden if you like, and just draw next to the map that you currently have. And it will increase the size of the overall map to accommodate what you've just done. Yeah, of course, you then might have to remove this again and you might have to mix it up a bit, but that's an easy way, or actually the only way I found to, to increase the size of a landscape. So you got then to remove rooms, you paint it up like this, whatever you want to remove from it, click on the bin, whoop, and takes it out the and it replaces it with forest. The only thing that is noticeable it's flat. You can see here the path of the former wall. And if you want to mix that up again, smooth the terrain out a bit. All done. Touched up. So Vito, if you have questions about the tool, then please ask them. This is not really a platform for me to talk about myself. But I can tell you that I'm not a developer. I'm just a player and GM, and that's a really good tool for me, which I have been using for a little while since I kickstarted this. So, how about a boat? Would you like a boat? We have some boats. You may think, oh, this boat is too big. Let's say it's trying to be a little bit. Jump. Shrink it down. Maybe put a sack in it. On the bench. Um, yeah. I'm quite pleased with this. A bit too many short bits of wood. There you go. Come on, guys. You must have some questions. Other than who am I? So. Yeah. Let me find a nice angle for it. Oh yeah, if you click up here again, just to show you, this is the top-down battle map style. Yeah, you can zoom out a bit more, zoom in a bit more. You could export this straight into Fantasy Grounds or into Roll20, or if you're me, I would put this into Foundry, which is better than the other two by far, in my experience. This is the map with the elevation or with the 3D effect. And for landscape map, I'm still here resizing my trees. For landscape map, I actually would take a screenshot of this, something like this, and put that 
in Foundry and play as a diorama sort of thing. Yeah, it doesn't look like a real world because it just ends, but my players could deal with that. And I think what you gain by having the perspective over, over this is worth it. So, assets, what other assets have we got here? So for objects, if you look at nature, you've got lots of different flowers. You've got lots of other plants. You've got hedges. You've got um, poultry, sea perennes, okay, whatever that one is. You've got mushrooms, so yeah, toadstool. So you can, they are tiny. You can hardly see them. But let's make it bigger. That's probably the biggest you can make it. That's my toast tool. Yeah, I can't make it bigger. Let's move it to the sun. Ah, there, there you go. That's something for our druid. He always wants to select all the uh, different herbs and plants and wants to collect them all. And he always wants to collect teeth from monsters in forbidden lands. So as you can see, if I just scroll around here, that rock sort of sits on top of the landscape. It doesn't really embed itself, but it looks okay. Not too bad. If you put it on a slope, then it looks a bit odd. Yeah, but if you ever want to touch that up, you just go in here. You say, I want to raise the terrain around it, make the brush nice and small. Really zoomed in now. Raise it, and now it looks like it belongs there. Um, yeah, you're right with that, Sir Punch. One of the things I have, this is not the room right now. Let me zoom out again. But yeah, I did notice that a, a tree, for example, will cause a shadow within a building. That's a bit silly. Um, what I hope is that at some point they will have some way of having the uh, roof layer, like on Foundry, for example, you can have a roof layer over your buildings and when people go in, that disappears and you just see the internal map with the internal lighting. Um, what you can, however, do, I'm pretty sure, is if you export it to Foundry without all the lights, it will not actually do the shadows either. But I haven't tried that out yet. Just from what I've seen in a video. So, um, so if I go to export, I don't have a, a building here, that's the problem. But this setting here, only export lights to VTT, I don't think you then get the rendered shadows. That might be worth a go. So, let me put a little building somewhere. So, <laughs> what shall we go for? A crypt, castle, a chapel. So, chapel. Oh, I don't like that chapel. Let's recalculate that. That looks strange to have that sort of altar in a chapel, but okay, let's redo that. And I want a nice bright floor. flooring um, stone yeah so you can now see that there are shadows from the windows coming in and if this really had a roof that shadow shouldn't look like that should it yeah because the light wouldn't come from the top so if I then export this, let's have a look at what it looks like. Just going to export it as a as a plain picture. So we don't have to kick it into Foundry to look at it. Um, shadow. So. Yeah. So if I just do the image, it still has the environmental shadows here, right? It's a punch. 
Yeah, absolutely right. If you look at some of the other ones I've done here, just as a picture, um, yeah, you do get the shadows, but this one is actually outside, so that's fine. I mean, how cool is this as a, as a battle map? And I really didn't take any time at all. This was during the day, the same picture. Yeah, just changed the lighting and saved it as a picture. Um, this one is actually one of the demo maps that they use. You can get it on the Discord, and it's quite full of assets. But again, the implication here, if you look at the shadows, is that there's no roof on this place. It's possible, but that's what Sir Punch is talking about there. And yeah, this is another environmental one I did the other day. And this is one I actually used um, a few weeks ago. I made this one for Forbidden Lands. Um, there's the Eye of the Rose, which is an orc fortress. It used to be built by the, let me think this through, by the dwarves for the elves, but now the orcs live there. And this is the orc empress's bedroom I made. So outside you've got the defensive wall here. That's why it's not part of the habitation. And then they had the empress's bedroom that they snuck in through the back door here. And the reception room and the bathroom and the servants' quarters uh, worked really well. Some good fun in that scenario. It's also available on, on the channel as actual play, but in German. So you would have to speak German. Right. So if I wanted to rip out this um, chapel again, because I want to go back to my nature, I can just delete it like this. And replaces it with, you can now see, flattened landscape. So ruffle it up again. So now it looks a bit wilder, rocky outcrop. There you go. Any other questions? Anything you want me to, to show you? Anything you want to have a look at? Lots of different assets, as I was talking about already. Um, a lot of these assets, like a latrine in the woods, you can just plonk somewhere. And there you go. And people will wonder, what is a latrine doing there? You could just use the bush, couldn't you? But why not? Yeah, compare this, for example, to um, Dungeon Draft, where you have to find every single asset and place it. Or to uh, Dungeon Fog, which I've used before, where, again, you place every single item. Having things pre-generated for you, especially in, in buildings and rooms, is a real boom. It makes it so much quicker. And then, yeah, it's a straw man, you might not like it, but, like I was showing you earlier in the, in the village map, if you don't like it, you can easily change it. Yeah, here's the a barracks level I made the other, um, earlier today, actually. I took no time at all. Yeah, I had to shift the furniture about a little bit and balance it out, put a proper latrine on it. Yeah, storage room you've got there, the coach house. Yeah, and if I wanted to play with this as a battle map, yeah, import it. I've got a video on how to import stuff. It takes three minutes and you're done. If you want to adjust the lighting to flicker, it takes a few more minutes, but other than that, really cool. Right, I think if you guys don't have any questions, I might just switch this off and go to my Betty Buys. Yeah, love this program, absolutely love it. And I don't even know how much it is on, on Steam, do you guys know? find out. Uh, dungeon Alchemist Steam. Something like 35 quid, I think. And I can't wait because these uh, the map files, you can share them. 
So once they have their um, 45 US dollar, okay, 31.99 in great British pounds of the Queen's silver, um, sterling that is. So 31.99, it's not bad. I think once this gets going and they've got the, the sort of community where you swap maps about, it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm, I need to read up because there's something about how how you can use this for your own products, like uh, commercially, for example, if you wanted to create an adventure and you want to sell it on drive through or something, whether you can include them or not. I haven't read it up uh, out on it, but I think there is a a license included of some sort. Yeah, good. Anyway, is there any way to choose at what level a building should be placed? So the ground level was higher than the building level. Right, I think, I think I know what you mean. Let's, let's have a look. New map. Let's do a ravine, you said, yeah? So lots of height difference. Um, with a river in it. So something like this. And then you created a castle. Um, Let's do castle entrance. And I'm just going to plonk it somewhere like this. So what you now see is that it basically puts it right down. Do you want to do it higher up? Is that what you're saying? Because the, the ground is up there and the building is down there. Let me see. Can you raise the ground? Underneath the building? No, you can't, can you? You can raise it all the way around it. Uh, Mr. Dinjavel, I have not experimented with this. So let me have a look. If I flatten the terrain at a higher level. Takes a moment. So I'm bringing it all to the same sort of height. Like you would have to do if you're actually building something, right? You have to level the ground first. Ah, no, I move it up, not down. So I'll use my iron, my steam iron here. Oh, don't remind me, I have to do all my shirt ironing again. 30 shirts or something. Ugh. So, and if I now place a little room on top, No, I will still sink it. I will still sink it into the ground. So I think I've, I've got the same question like you do. Might be something for the Discord. Yeah, if you um, find the Discord for these guys. I'm sure they can talk about that, but it's possible or whether it's going to be on the roadmap. If you lower all the ground around the building, yeah, but then you don't really have a ravine, do you? Um, there is an easy way to just say flatten terrain to room height, yeah. So it basically will drop it to where the rooms are, but I think the rooms are the fixed height. So it falls it down. This really reminds me of me playing Populous back in the in the days when I was young. Does anybody remember Populous? We were playing a god, and you had to create and level and smite and level landscapes. That's a way of doing it, but it's not. I think that's not what um, Mr. Dinjavel is, was talking about. <laughs> Very much like Populous, you remember it, excellent. Oh yes, many an hour I spent on Populous. And it was so frustrating. Black and white was good as well. Gingerbread castle. Right, any other questions? That was a good question though. I hadn't actually tried that out before. Everybody should have gingerbread windows, right? Or gingerbread decorations on the outside of the house. Yeah, no windows.
Have you guys, um, the largest map I've made, I think it was something like 40 by 40 at this stage. Um, my my computer is sort of mid-upper range, it's not a beast or anything, but at least I can run this stuff without actually stuttering. The fans don't even come on and I can stream at the same time. And this is a 4K screen at this moment, so works fine. You want me to try a big map? What shall we go for? Shall we try 70 by 70 and see what happens? If my stream just ends, then you know you've just killed my computer. Let's go for hills. Broadleaf. No water. I'm going to push the button. You're making a large map of 70 by 70. <laughs> Let's have a go. <laughs> Uh-huh, it's thinking. I've got a map. Yeah. This is a pretty big map, isn't it? So let's clear some terrain. So I could have a big ambush or something, and there's a road through it. Oh, the performance is still pretty good. But I can hear my, my graphics card is now starting to breathe. It's putting a fan on. Let's put a crossroad in here. Yeah, could you imagine how long this would take you on something like Dungeon Draft? Which I'd like, by the way, or Arkenforge, or one of the other ones. Right, so big, a couple of thinned out stuff. Right, and now I want to flatten it slightly, so we've got a better road coming through it. Make the brush a bit bigger. Still works. Still works. Yeah, the fan speeds are coming up. What's the largest map you've made, Sir Punch? Right. Let's build some roads. I think um, if you're not in a building, you can't really use the floor tile. So what you have to do is you have to paint some terrain so to the brush. And then you build your road. Oh, yes. Do I need to have a look at my GPU um, temperature? Tailspire, yeah. Tailspire, I love the music they play in the background of that. The soundtrack is probably the best thing I've got in Tailspire. Um, the assets are really lovely as well, but just putting something together and trying to level all the wall segments and stuff just took a while. Dungeon Draft, I, I get along with reasonably well, and Dungeon Fog I quite like as well. Campaign cartographer, I couldn't even understand the interface. That's another thing I tried. So there we go, we've got some dirt tracks. That wasn't so bad, was it? Need a big signpost in the middle. So go to assets, signpost. Maybe not bigger than the trees. Why can't I place my rock? Oh, oh, that's strange. Let's try these rocks. Yeah, that works. Standing stone. Yeah, all works, and it's still, it scrolls reasonably well. It's very slightly sh uh, stuttery on my screen now, very slight lag. But yeah, seems to cope really well. I'm not sure it would cope quite as well if I had lots and lots of building assets, um, which are, of course, more intensive. And if I put a, a forest of mirrors where I had to 
do the reflection. So do you see that earlier when I put a mirror on? Um, one of the things, I'm quite charmed by this. Sorry, some objects, mirror. So if I put a mirror here, I'll make it nice and big. Put it somewhere. What it did do earlier, it doesn't do it now. Maybe it's because we're in the landscape, not in a room. The reflections are all there. So let's put something interesting in front of it. No, it doesn't do it now, does it? Maybe. That's too small. <laughs> Not quite sure who would be this tall, but yeah, but you could see in the interior levels that the mirror actually picks up the, the reflections. And that must need some extra calculations as well. Hundred by hundred. What did what did Foundry do when you try to put something as big as that in? Did it just say, mm, can't cope with this? Maybe put it to very high code. No, that's a bit much, isn't it? So let's see. Export. Crossroads. So it is. How big is it? Oh, it's 24. 24 meg. That's 70 by 70. It's not good for Foundry of that, because every player will have to load it. Um, even if you locally, you can use it like this. What I would do in that case, and let me see whether I can actually do that before I put it in Foundry. Um, what is it called? Um, what is it called? If I put it into XN Convert, and I make a, a web P from it, it might be better. So convert. It's eleven thousand seven hundred pixel square. That's a lot of pixels. There's certainly one thing I, I noticed when I was doing scenarios. Um, Forbidden Lands, Alien, that sort of stuff for for Foundry is Web P is much lighter. It's chewing on this. Normally this is really quick, this converter. Saved. Right, where did it save it? Oh, it saved it to Vason. Why did it go to Winter's Tale Mason? Anyway, should be able to find it here, right? No. So, where did it put it? RPG Mason. It's the last export I must have used. Winter's Tale. It's a mystery. It's a Winter's Tale. Crossroads result. So it's still 22. That didn't save a lot, did it? Cut it from there. Put it in my maps. Dungeon Alchemist. Paste it in here. Let's let's see. Let's see how my foundry copes. And this is now running Foundry as well as Alchemy, uh, Dungeon Alchemist at the same time. I'm going to put it in my Ruins of Simba room. Now, I haven't done the lighting export. I'm not going to use the lighting export. So I'm just purely going to use the, the picture here. So, new scene, create a scene, crossroads. Mm -hmm. Background image. 
damage. Battle maps. Crossroads. Should I use the JPEG or the WebP? Use the JPEG, why not? There wasn't much in it. Ah. Did I click on the wrong thing? Crossroads results. WebP. Okay, that works. So, let's see. Save changes. Um, foundry server service, yes. Um, I used the forge, and I've been using the forge right from the beginning when I started Foundry. Yeah, because I had not great internet connection at the time. I also, over here, the Raspberry Pi um, that runs Foundry. So for anything that is a bit lighter on assets, I can actually self-host it. But because I'm paying for the forge, I don't really need to do that. So, it didn't take as long, by the way, I just not seen the prompt in the background. So, this is the ravine map I had previously shown you. Let's go back to the crossroad map. Loading it for a moment. Hmm. Remains black. Ah, uh, maybe it was a bit too big. Ah, no, it's not too big. I just wasn't looking in the right place. Yeah, so that came around quite nicely. Remember this table I made really big. Let me just drop a normal token into it. <laughs> so th this is my normal token, and you can see it's still got the vision limitations on it. Uh, token vision, token vision. Once it's switched off, basic grid. Lighting, dim, dim, Save changes. So it's a bit small, isn't it? But yeah, it's a huge battle map now. You could have lots of fun with it. And it's still zippy enough, still works. Right, any other questions? Because I'm on holiday, so I can actually go to bed a bit late, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun doing this. Oh, I, well, I mentioned earlier that I was doing some of these maps as perspective maps. Yeah, so rather than having a, a top-down like you normally would do as a battle map like this. Yeah, which looks pretty cool already, I have to say. Um, for this sort of landscape map, I quite like to do it like this. It looks a bit moodier, doesn't it? And you still, if you drop your, your icon on it, okay, you should really have a standee, you should have a 3D icon, but um, this would work really well, I think, the sort of diorama feel that you get from it. And you can't rotate it here, that, that would be really cool, but I, I quite like this look. Have we got any more? Finding a table of that size in a scenario. <laughs> there is, I don't know whether you know the Dark Eye. Um, there's a scenario for the Dark Eye, quite old, where basically you just throw the players into uh, a giant world. And yeah, that would be perfect for that. That would be absolutely perfect because they are the clueless. They basically walk through, I think it's a barrow, so underneath and there's a portal. They come back out and they think everything is normal, just the trees are a bit higher. And then they come across something like this. They come across a huge bucket initially, I think it is. And it creeps them out. Good call. Um, oh, now there's a question. Are there any add-on modules that you use in Foundry that you couldn't live without? Hmm. That's a good question. I use quite a few, but I have to say this is my local install, so I don't have all the modules on here. Um, because I normally use the Forge, so I don't have the full list here. But let's have a look. If I look at Manage Modules, might be a bit small, I hope you can see that. Um, what I always use is, is um, Pincushion and background, uh, background with pins. 
here. So if you make maps and so on, and you want to, to put things on it, maybe I should show you that in my Forge install. Um, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, let me just pull up my Forge. So I need the browser. If I go to my Forbidden Lands, for example, my German version of it. Take a moment because it's a huge campaign world, that one. Yeah, we're going to have another game of this next Friday, so we'll have to come up with some scenario ideas. We just finish the scenario and they want to go back to the other place, but I never let them get back to where they started without a few more challenges. So I need to come up with something and probably create a nice map for it. So come on, load it. So if you have um, a big map, like you do in Forbidden Lands, I don't know whether you've played Forbidden Lands, but it's... Uh, Part of its genetics, if you like, is definitely map crawling, hex crawling. Oh, interesting. Hasn't quite worked here. Right. But if you look here, for example, yeah, I've got these villages here, uh, and they're tiles. Map pins, to be precise. So if I double click on it, I get to my journal entry. And that is something that background list pins and pin cushion allows you to do. Yeah, you can just drag any any journal entry from over here. A large dungeon, yeah, okay. That was a randomly generated one. You normally have this sort of icon, and I don't think it looks great. So what you can do with the pincushion, you can replace the icons. So if I go to... Where did I stick them? Uh, is it worlds? I think it's under worlds. And then I got forbidden lands. Stickers, map stickers. You can then use these stickers instead. Yeah, either with this, uh, with a sort of hex surround, or like I've done here, just with a PNG with no surround on it. Update it, and there you go. It's just a tower. Yeah, and you can place it wherever you like. If you hold Shift, you can put it anywhere in a hex. It doesn't have to be in the center, and that allows you to then use these these stickers that. And forbidden lands actually come as stickers for the paper map you get um, and populate your map this way so there's a dungeon and these are the the default ones so that's definitely a module i like and i play with it a lot what other modules have i got on here let me get the ui a bit bigger so you can see what i'm doing so i like that one break time is quite useful it's not that important though yeah if we just go away and basically we have a short break. I put this on the screen and people let me know when they're back. Um, clocks is useful. Um, I use clocks for factions, for example, here. So I've got my factions tracker here and how how annoyed are the different factions with them. Yeah, so these, these are positive things and segments fill up and it basically just keeps um, track for me to say, all right, the uh, the dwarves here, they like them, but actually the Order of the Snake of Worm, they are really liking them, but the Rust Brothers, they are actually against them, they are starting to get annoyed with them. So once it's half full, they start to be actively. So that's quite useful. Um, the Essene Enhancements, I definitely want that one. Um, it doesn't do a lot, actually, but when you go to a different scene, uh, scene, sorry, that's this one, and you just click on it, Left click, normal left click, it switches scene rather than having to go on typical foundry thing, which is right click and then activate or show map. Yeah, and it also gives you um, scene enhancements. Is this one here? So it gives you this sort of vignette effect. I'm not sure it's not the best map for it. I don't use that a lot, but DF scene enhancements, the key thing for me is I can left click on the scene to open it. Dice so nice, definitely you want that. Uh, Fog Manager I don't really use anymore. Um, FX Master, yeah, I'm sure you know that one. That's quite good. Just for fireballs or rain or snow or crow circling. GM Screen, I love GM Screen. So that would make the list. Yeah, GM Screen, you just put it up here and you can have different 
taps on it if you don't know it. So this is zoomed in a bit, but basically these are all my characters. If I zoom out a bit again, I basically get four full character sheets next to each other. And I can always see what they're doing. Just click off one button. I've got my rules reference in here, the tables that I need. You can share these with the players as well. So you can have one tab that has the rules reference for all the players. And they don't have to go through the journals for this. Journeying rules with all the different um, um, connections to the actual entry in the rule books. So yeah, I've got my overview here and I can share it easily. And then I've got my story on here. So planning out what, what the last NPCs were, what the story is, what the encounters were, the index for the whole place where they currently were, the eye of the rose. And you can the layout again you can modify that quite nicely. That's that's a really cool module. Um, I quite like narrator tools. Um, we're really getting away from Dungeon uh, Alchemist, are we? So if I go, for example, and I've got something like this, and I want to make sure that the players have it. Yeah, highlight it, right click, narrate. And you can see, you can just about see it in the background there. That gets displayed on everybody's screen. And if it's a longer text, it will start scrolling up. Now that's quite cool. Um, a bit more immersion. Most of the others I think I could do without if I needed to. Yeah, that's the ones I really would highlight. Does that answer the question? It's a bunch. I can show you one of the maps I did in Dungeon Alchemist just to get back on topic. Um, Soria's Tower. So this is a Dungeon Alchemist map. Yeah, the Empress's bedroom. Completely done in the beta version of it and used to play. And the only other thing I added was I modified the lights a bit so that I had animated lights. Yeah, and I switched some lights off that came across from Foundry. Sorry, from Dungeon Alchemist. Yeah, the walling all came across. I didn't have to do anything with the walls. They were absolutely perfect. Other than this one, I think. No, no, actually, I didn't remove those. That must have been good as well. Right. It's coming up to midnight, where I live. <laughs> I think I should really use a des uh, table like this. Scare my players. Good stuff. Anyway, I think I'm going to tune out. It's, it's gone for over an hour now. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Yeah, if you like, you know what to do. Thumbs, subscribe, whatever you want to do. It's very interesting to see just how much interest um, Dungeon Alchemist has generated for the channel. Yeah, um, videos shot up to 200, 300 views now. And I, I don't typically get that many. Let's put it that way. Anyway, glad you could make it. And you never know, you might, I might see you again. Thank you for the good questions and for taking part. Makes